keen interest in medieval and historical archery has always been a keen factor of my life. And recently I've really wanted to make an authentic medieval archery bracer to go with my uh, medieval archery. G'day guys, my name is Ben and welcome to Medieval Mayhem. On this channel you'll find lots of DIY videos into costuming and medieval furniture. You'll find lots of videos into medieval reenactment and you'll find lots of guides on how did events happen. Who are the key personalities and why did things take place in the way that they did. So for those of you with an interest in medieval history this is the channel for you. Please consider subscribing, it really helps the channel to build. And we're growing such a great community here, we've just passed 300 subscribers. Fantastic! In this particular project I'm going to be using 3mm leather. This is quite a thick leather uh, and it does require quite a lot of effort to make it work. However, it's quite authentic to the medieval period. Uh, for a leather project like this, this is my basic toolkit. From right to left we have a basic hammer. We have a uh, box knife in this case by Stanley. I have a punch for punching holes with. I have a, uh, a fine work sort of scalpel type knife. There's a what's called a stylus which is a uh, I guess a blunt metal pin and that's just used for scribing detail onto leather. I have a leather, leather beveler. I have a needle and some waxed thread. Uh, because it's waxed thread I'll then use a lighter just to seal the ends. Uh, obviously a ruler of some description or a straight edge. Uh, I also have a, um, a tool to mark out uh, edges from the um, side. I also have leather dye and then also a sealer. So if you're going to dye the leather then uh, it's important to seal it and what that does is protect it from UV light and also I guess just rain and stuff like that as well. Uh, otherwise the, the dye will fade. And then I have some sponges to apply both the dye and also the sealer. Uh, don't be afraid if you have to make a second pass at cutting the leather that's fine. Keep your blades nice and sharp. They don't cost much for a knife like this. Realistically, what, 20 or 30 cents for a blade, no big deal. Simplest way to tie a knot is to wrap it around your finger twice, roll it down, oh no, and there we have a knot. We now have all the component parts cut and ready to go. Ready, I have the archery bracer cut out of 3mm leather. I have the piece to hold the buckle. I have the uh, strap. I'm actually going to apply a liner to this. This is made out of 1.8mm leather. This is not necessarily historically accurate. Um, medieval ones were not lined, but uh, I find it slightly more comfortable. Please note the, uh, the length of the strap. Medieval archery braces were worn on top of a doublet. Uh, not everyone does that these days, clearly. So uh, you may need to, if you're going to follow this kind of idea, you might want to adjust that for yourself. And over here we have a brass buckle. Right, the first thing I'm going to do is put the straps onto the main piece. I don't use uh, rivets, I prefer to sew. So we're going to punch two rows of holes. One row won't work sufficiently, but two will. I've seen some people using stitching ponies and all sorts. I don't think it's necessary at all. The, uh, the simplest way to do this I find is uh, first of all to place a stitch through the leather like so, radio. Now coming back, 
Now as I stitch around, you'll notice Right, you'll notice that we're leaving some gaps here. So what I do is stitch around once in one direction and then go back around the other way. This is called a double saddle method. Um, it's incredibly strong. Um, far stronger than it probably needs to be. But it's, um, it's exceptionally strong for this kind of application. And now we have a nice continuous row of stitches. Alrighty, stitching is now complete. I'm pretty happy with that. Now the next thing I'm going to do is put the buckle on. Here's our buckle. I've already marked out where it's going to go. So what I'm going to simply do is use a hole punch, punch two holes, and then connect the holes with a ah, sorry, connect the two holes with a pass from the um, knife. That will go like so. I'm going to need two rows of stitching. Now I'm just going to apply the backing to this. You don't need to, it's not historically accurate, but you can do, it makes it more comfortable. So the first part of this process is just to evenly wet the leather. Give that a couple of minutes for the uh, leather to dry slightly. And then I'm going to use this tool. This is actually an engineer's scribe that I got from a hardware store, but perfect for the job. And what we're going to do is we're going to, just going to indent around the, as you can see, it's, just, it's already drying off. What we're doing is uh, marking in where the um, straps are so that uh, there's a reference point. I'm just going to apply a little bit of white glue between the two layers. You don't need much. You just need an even coat. It's going to get stitched down anyway. So this really just helps in that process. It's kind of important to wipe off any excess glue because that will inhibit uh, the process of tooling the leather as we go. Alright, we're going to leave that to dry for a bit. Alrighty, so now we're basically finished. The buckle's on, the lining's on, the stitching's all completed. There's really only two things left to do. Uh, one is we're going to just do a, um, a pass a bevel over the outside of it, and that's just going to smooth down the edges. And the second thing we're going to do is just do a little bit of tooling. I don't think we need to make it super duper, you know, over the top, but uh, we might just make it uh, do a little bit of uh, scribing on it. And then lastly, we'll um, apply some colour and then the sealer to it. So let's go on. So the glue is still technically curing and that's fine. It's, it's as I say, it's stitched. Uh, I like using a beveler on all of my leather products. Um, and the reason that I do that, I think not only does it give it a much better finish Um, but it just helps to make it you know, a little bit more user friendly. It doesn't have those sharp edges from the cutting. It just looks that little bit nicer. I'll be doing a video sh fairly shortly on the actual leather bevelers that I use. This is, um, you can take two or three passes with a leather beveler if you need to. Um, just depends on the thickness of the leather and so on. Otherwise, it just, I think it helps give it that little bit more of a 
finished look as well. Right now we need to get some tooling done. So the first thing we're going to do has that you can see that drawing pretty much in front of you and it won't take long. I just want it to have a bit of moisture in it for the purposes of the tooling. Right, we're just keeping this real simple. I'm using a Celtic Weave wheel, which I've had for a few years. Never really had the opportunity to use. But it's making a very nice pattern. I don't think it needs a lot more than that. This area here I would suggest leaving clear because that's where the bowstring is going to strike and therefore any detail or whatever that you've got on there will actually rub off. Alright, we're just going to apply a nice light brown dye to this. what we're going to do is just apply a leather sealer just the last little bits of drying off but I'm really happy with this this has come out really well uh, and this is going to work super. Um, really nice finish to it. Just drying off just a little bit. Uh, okay guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe and share. And I'll catch you in my next video.